Um, it's a wild story. Joining us now is a man from the great state of Texas. Oh, yeah. yeah. Guy who's been in jail in Texas. What? Whoa. Now he's a champion in Texas. Mm -hmm. A member of the Chicago Bulls, an absolute stallion, Paisano, Alex Caruso. Yeah! yeah! <laughs> so, what, what did I walk into? Uh, we're well, talking about uh, happy endings and legalities of them and all that stuff, Alex. That was, that was, a, that was a great intro, but that was a great 60 seconds prior to the intro <laughs> to just get, get me jump-started into the show. Well, it's great to have you. Uh, thank you so much for joining us. I thought I spent enough time separating you from the explosion of semen, <laughs> but I guess not. You know, I guess you the were... The buffer was not, not big enough, apparently. All right, can you take him off the screen real quick? Uh, hey, AJ, how you doing today, man? <laughs> I'm doing great. How are you? I'm pretty good, dude. I'm pretty excited. Ty, how you doing? I'm doing great. How are you? Connor, life? Yeah, fantastic. Oh, big win last night. Huge win. For you guys lose in Boston, but it's big. Tone, how you uh, feeling, man? Couldn't be better. Hey, me too. Joining, you know why I'm so pumped up? Why? Why? First time guest. What? Yeah, first time guest on the show. Ladies and gentlemen, a member of the Chicago Bulls, <laughs> Alex Caruso. Yeah! yeah! Much better, much better. All right, hey, how you doing, man? How's the off season? What are you up to? Are you down in Texas? Are you in Chicago? What do you got going on? Yeah, no, I'm down in Texas. Uh, bought a house in Austin in the off season, so I'm down here just, you know, working out, playing golf, hanging with my dog, doing what Texas kids do, I guess. Um, the golf. Are you a member at any country clubs? <laughs> Is there uh, any success that we need to talk about? A potential call that happened today? Um, no, no official six. I mean, the steps are in order. I just, you know, there's, there's some, the first step is, is taking place. We gotta go two and three and then we'll, then we'll be, you know. We'll AJ, I was so done. baffled. This dude's in the NBA. He's playing in Tahoe for the first time coming up in a month from now. Can't wait to see him out there. He just moved to Austin. He told me the other day, oh, I gotta go meet with somebody to see if I can become a member at this court. You can't. You're fucking Alex Caruso. Yeah. You can just pay the money. You're there. I don't understand what the deal is. Is this some super secret course? No, it's, I mean it's a nice course. It's one of the it's one of the nicer ones in Austin, uh, Spanish Oaks Country Club. But Ooh. you know, yeah, I took the tour today. They got a they got a brisket. They got a guy just out there cooking cooking a bunch of meat on hole seven, just brisket, jalapeno cheese sausage. Tested that out. Oh, what? <laughs> it got the it got the seal of approval for the uh, the born and raised Texas kid. So yeah, as soon as we can get this stuff, you know, the the process a little hurried up. I'm excited to get out there and take advantage of that hey shout out to spanish Oaks. Ah, shout out. hey let's get this thing done yeah. he's alex caruso Come texas on. guy is going to be playing golf in front of the world about a month from now how's your game Are you a player i assume you're a stick great athlete yeah so we, we've talked previously right so i'm like a mid-80s guy right out of right out of the season i haven't played a lot you know coming off of wrist surgery you know we're oh. we, we're, we're coming in coming Jeez. in fresh uh, I did pop off a nice little 81 yesterday. Whoa. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Raise some eyebrows. Raise some eyebrows. Um, that's that's not the median though. The median's probably like mid 80s. Good word. Who do you normally play with? Like any of your teammates? Any good? Um, I played with Zach before. I played with Zach. He he's new to it. A couple years in, but I mean he's so athletic. Like give him like a year or two, he's gonna probably be in the 80s too. Uh, Matt Thomas, one of the guys that was was one of our uh, reserve players this year. I played with him a bunch. Um, and then I played with, I mean, in the bubble, I played a bunch with Jr. and then Kuz and then a couple of our assistants. Hey, Dude, no. honestly, COVID kind of COVID kind of swept the golf bug into the NBA. And I know a bunch of people have started playing a lot more just because of you know that was the only thing you could do for a year and a half. Okay, so this is a good conversation starting point here. The, the bubble obviously had no fans. Uh, then it became like partial fans. Did guys get comfortable without the fans there and with more space around the court? And now the fans have been completely integrated back into the sport. Is there a beef between players and fans? Is that just a normal thing? Because what happened last well, night with Draymond and uh, Clay being like, "This isn't classy," and everything, it's Boston. Like that's gonna happen. Yeah, it's Boston. What do you? I mean, what do you expect? Yeah, 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 yeah. So is that a thing though? Is there some? Because you guys are more intimate with the fans than any other sport, I think. Yeah. And that's a real relationship that I feel like we only learn about when it goes bad is there real conversation around the league about that i mean you know it's it's just highlighted right now right it's the finals boston hasn't been there in however many years um you know their fans are traditionally pretty rowdy i don't oh, yeah. think that's like a, a new thing if you follow basketball like everybody knows boston's a little any a sport little crazy they, they get their they get their beers in pre-game you know we'll just put it like that they they, they they don't hold back but no, I mean, the bubble was fun just because, 
it was almost like, you know, glorified pickup to a point because there's no fans, right? So it feels like a little bit like the summer. Um, but then once they throw the ball up, you know, the games, the games got back to being NBA games and you're like, oh, okay. No, I, I got to guard Damian Lillard, so I should probably like focus up a little bit. <laughs> but hey, no, the, the the fan interaction, my bad, the fan interaction is just is what it is. Like you're gonna get that in any sport. You just can't always hear him in football because there's you know eighty thousand to sixty thousand people, and and you're fifty yards away from the field. Why do you think we see it so more? Like, or at least I guess because social media, whatever, it could always be happening. Now we just see it more. But is it partly because they sell every seat possible? Like. Your head coach is sitting here, and there's five yeah. randoms that paid fifty grand to have the seats between like the the press, the little booth, and the uh, yeah. end of your bench. Like you guys don't even have anywhere to sit. Yeah, to be honest, some places I really hate playing just because like the, the the last seat on the bench, you literally are knocking knees with whoever pays you know pays money for that baseline seat far right next to the bench. Like you, you got some dude over there just drinking you know Miller Light. <laughs> Five. Yelling, yelling some obscenities, and you're over here like trying to focus, play a game. Uh, that there's a couple arenas. Boston's one of them. Oh, yeah. uh, Phoenix is one of them. Of course, Golden State's one of them. Where you just are like, you're literally in the fans' lap. And like, other than that, I really don't, you know, I really don't give a shit. It's like you can put fans wherever you want. Like they're fans, they're gonna do what they do. You kind of like that's kind of part of like comes with the territory, right? Like you got to be a professional athlete. You got to deal with that, but. Yeah, the the ones the ones at the end of the bench are the ones that 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 really bug me. The ones next to the scores table, those ones aren't that bad. Those are what the showcase or superstar seats mm-hmm. or whatever. They're at every arena, the opposite of the hard yeah, camera. Yeah. It's like four or five seats, and they charge like hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars for those seats. Yeah. But you're yeah. gonna get on TV. You're gonna be on TV. Well, you're gonna be able to do whatever you want to do. Uh, let's get talk. Street cred up. Yeah, get your street and market something if you wanna. <laughs> mm-hmm. If you wanna yeah, market yeah, anything. Yeah. Big branding opportunity. Big, especially for old Caruso there, huh? Maybe get yourself some. Well, uh, no? I'm right. on the court, so you know. Hey, what age? At what age did you know you were going to make the NBA? Did you? Because I feel like uh, my take on the NBA is much smaller community because there's obviously less guys on the team, but also it's almost like you know whether somebody's going to be in the NBA or not. Did you know your entire life? And how many of these guys have you known since you were a kid playing? No, I really didn't know. So I was like, I was a late bloomer. My my career is kind of cyclical. Like high school, I was a late bloomer. Won D one, and then college, I was like. I played a little bit. We weren't very good. Bloomed late into like a you know professional prospect, um, but even then, like you know, I had to go to the G League for a whole year, and then I had to play two way. I think I think probably after the summer league where I kind of like jumped onto the scene when I was playing with the uh, with the Lakers. That was kind of when I like figured it out. I was like, all right, I'm just going to keep working. I'll get a little better, and I'll eventually make it. Um, but no, I wasn't like you know I wasn't like a top ten recruit in the country I wasn't the McDonald's kid I didn't really know until I knew you know until they like let me have the contract and a pin and was like hey sign this I was like all right cool now now I'm in oh so I'm signing an NBA contract I thought this was potential now I'm allowed on the court in a uniform got it how was it playing with Braun in the Lakers it seemed like you were beloved by that entire squad and obviously LeBron's name automatically draws reactions from people because he has been a superstar since he's like 13 14 years old and has been mm-hmm. able to handle it all what was your relationship like with him and how would you describe him that maybe people wouldn't necessarily uh say or see from the outside looking in yeah I have a great relationship with him um you know everyone sees the the basketball stuff right you know you see the plays and the alley-oops and the passes and stuff uh, we, we had a really good chemistry on the court of just like reading, you know, taking advantage of other teams. You know, that's something that he does at the highest level, most elite level. And then I'm, I'm pretty good at it and I'm getting better the more I play, the more years I get under my belt. But we just had a good connection. Um, and then off the court, man, you know, he's just one of the guys, you know, he, he, he's in the group chat just like everybody else. Uh, he's, a, he's actually a, like he's a really big jokester. Like you can kind of tell a little bit through like his social media is like he he's kind of a goofball, but he he just is like a big ass kid, you know, and he just happens to be the the brainiac that he is in the business world. But like basketball wise, he's just another guy on the team, cracks jokes, shows up to shoot around, you know, all the other stuff. Uh, obviously, I'm a little biased because you know he <laughs> he helped me win a championship, so that was like, <laughs> yeah. you know, I, I I hold him in high regard. But yeah, I think I mean. 
from the outside looking in, people are always going to hate greatness. You know, that's just kind of how it is. You know, there's people that hate Tom Brady for some reason when there's really no reason to. You know, it's one of those things where you're on his team, you love him. You're, you're not on his team, you kind of hate him. Huh. Would you like to see uh, LeBron end up playing with his son here in a couple of years? I think that'd be awesome. Yeah, that'd be cool. Well, you know, forget he's got a couple of sons, and the way he's going, he might be able to play with, you know, both of them. The dude, dude's a freak, man. He's he's an animal. Like I don't know, he figured it out. Whatever the code is, whatever the the health and wellness, like he's he's just a really smart guy in general. You know, people don't give him credit for how smart he is. You know, just in life, he's got a great brain, and he's figured out how to keep his body in top shape and then his discipline to do that is just it's ridiculous. What happens that? How, what year are you going into uh, next year? Year six. You feeling older? I know you had that wrist injury that kept you out a little bit. We're all very <laughs> bummed about it. But are you starting to have to do anything different for your body? Because the NBA is so yeah. much running, yeah. so much running, travel, a lot of games. Mentally, it's probably exhausting. Have you had to change or adapt? And did LeBron help you with that at all? Because it feels like that's his biggest weapon to be able to maintain the level that he's maintained for all these like decades now at this point. Yeah, you know, yeah, for sure. I mean, being around, you know, when I was in L.A. for those those two years where I was on a regular contract with them, we won the championship, and then the year after, just being around professionals, like guys that have spent a decade plus in the league, you know, Danny Green, Rondo, Dwight Howard, uh, Braun, A.D., um, they, it just rubs off on you. You know, when you see them in there before everybody else, and then they're getting their work in, taking care of their bodies, you know, watching the diet, getting the recovery, uh, it really taught me how to be a pro. And then this year, you know, I think I averaged somewhere around 30 minutes a game. And that's the first time, you know, my professional career, maybe since the G League. But, you know, it doesn't compare to the NBA, just playing that many minutes. So for me, this year was kind of a learning experience to figure out, you know, how much I need to eat, you know, when I need to sleep, when I need to get my massages, when I need to do the ice, the ice bath. Uh, so, you know, it's all just a learning experience. You know, you got to figure out what works for you. Everyone's different. But uh yeah just i mean learning how to be a pro you know now 28 going into sixth year i think i pretty much know how to do it like i'm more excited for the next five six years than i am you know the last five uh steph curry completely changed the game and have you guys acknowledged that within the league it's a whole new game now it feels like since steph has kind of arise uh kind of come onto the scene now i'm not saying he's the only shooter but the nba is much different than it was what 10 years ago 15 years ago and it's yeah, only evolving years, yeah, even more when you watch him play and you when you watch Golden State play, do you think like other teams, this is what teams are going to try to do in the future, or is he an alien? Yeah, I mean, the game's already gone that way. You know, I was watching random random highlights. I can't remember who it was, uh, just from, you know, late 2000s before the 2010s. And you got a center, like you got like Ben Wallace, who does nothing but rebound, block shots, set screens, dunk. And then you have a power forward who might shoot threes, but more than likely shoots like 15 foot jump shots and then rebounds and does all that. Like the, the game is just, you know, it's so much different. If you don't have a five man that can step out and, and shoot threes or, you know, at least one that comes off the bench where you can play a small five, uh, five guy lineup, you know, there's just not enough space on the court anymore. You know, it was, like you said, Steph kind of ruining, ruining the game, <laughs> changing the game. Uh, He's shooting it from 30 feet, and he's making it at like a 50% clip if you don't guard him. Like it just stretches the floor out, so you have to have guys that can guard multiple positions. You have to have guys that can switch. You have to have guys that can do multiple things, rebound, dribble, pass. It's really just it's becoming more and more positionless basketball, right? Like there's no traditional centers. There's no traditional small forwards, point guards, where it was like point guard brings the balls up, ball up runs the play shooting guard and small forward are kind of like scoring and then the bigs are setting screens and rebounding that, that doesn't exist anymore huh. what's your uh, what's your off season look like i know basketball players talk about they get together and play pick up games with other pros or college people and always like is there something that you like to work on every off season to try to improve yeah that's part of the, i mean at this point you know from from my background you know going undrafted g league two-way to the NBA, it's like every year I had to like do something in the summer to try and get better, right? To learn, to try and improve because I was trying to make a team. I was trying to make it into the league. Uh, so that's just kind of like the DNA I have now is like, I think I, like I have a little bit of a perfectionist complex to where it's like, no. if I'm not do, you know, if I'm not doing something then I feel like I'm like being passed or something. And that's like, I guess that's the best trait you can have as a pro athlete, right? Cause yes. 
work on the discipline, work on the drive. Like once you get it, you know, from there, it's just about showing up and putting in the work. So for me, you know, every, every off season, there's something that the last year I'll, I'll, I'll write specific games down throughout my like notes in my phone or something and put it in my, my computer to where I can remember. It's like, all right, I remember that game. I did X, Y, and Z. It's like, okay, now I remember like, that's, that's what I gotta, that's what I gotta work on this summer. What so you said, there's, there's 82 games. Like you're not going to remember something that happens in November in April when you're getting ready for playoffs. How do you feel about the shot right now? Is the shot good? What are we working on? Handles? Shot feels good. Shot feels really good. Really? Ooh. Still got it? I had a, had, a, had a good day on the court yesterday. I got one coming up in a couple hours now. But I told you, that's, that's just part of the basketball. Like you know, In the offseason, offseason basketball, everybody that plays in the league is Steph Curry. <laughs> Why? Like every, because it's just like there's there's – there's no rules. There's no structure. You're literally just out there like like a kid again, where you're just like hooping for the fun of it, you know. And and there's some people who are good enough to translate that into the NBA. You know, the Stephs, LeBron, Dame Lillard, Jason Tatum. Like there's some people who are just you know God given ability to be able to play like that all the time. And then there are people like me who play a good role, do what they're supposed to do, work on their game off season, and then show up to open runs and play like I played at the rec center in college. <laughs> <laughs> How tall are you? I like six five. Ah, uh, so yeah. it's not, you, if you Damn. were just like six three or six four, you could walk into any of these open gyms and they'd be like, "God, oh, the bald white." Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's the last, and then just light it up. I mean, I, you think I, you think at this point I can walk into a gym and someone at a basketball gym, someone's going to recognize me, especially in Texas. I would, who are you playing against? Are you playing with anybody else, or do you just? No, nah, I'm just working out. I'm just working out. I'm not doing. I'm not playing any pickup yet. Where do you work out? Your own gym? Go to college gym? Austin, Texas, somewhere? Or what do you do? No, the, the guy I'm working out with, he actually could get into the UT gym. And I told him, I was like, hey, man, I prefer not, you know, like this, this <laughs> being an A&M guy, it kind of goes against the code of ethics that uh, oh. that I grew up with. So it's just, I mean, hoopers just need a gym. You know, it's like you finding a random field and kicking footballs into the sky. Like you just need a, a basket, some lines and a couple of basketballs. So middle schools, uh, some private schools, high schools. You know, wherever you can get in, you fit in. It would be awesome just roll into one gym and all of a sudden the guy's just like, that dude's 25 or 30 right now. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like those workouts are just a much different level. There's levels to this shit. We're talking Alex Caruso, the Chicago Bulls. How do you feel about the Bulls? What was it like to play for such a legendary program like the Chicago Bulls? Not that the Lakers weren't, but you became no, a yeah. guy for the Chicago Bulls. Went on an electrifying run yeah. towards the end of the season, I do believe. Uh, what do you yeah. feel about, how do you feel about the Bulls and what was your time like there last year? It, it was good, you know, getting used to the city. Um, I knew that, you know, everyone knows the history of the Bulls, you know, especially with the last dance came out, like everybody learned the ins and outs of, you know, the true history of them. So that was that was fun to do and, and get to know before I showed up. Uh, but just, you know, the, fa the fans in general, they're just, they're good sports fans. You know, Chicago, Chicago citizens, they just, they understand the game. They understand football, baseball, basketball. Like they, they know what a good play is, what a bad play is. Like there was couple of games this year where we got booed because we played like shit and I was like yeah well that's pretty fitting like I would do me too <laughs> you know and it's just one of those things where it's like you just show up the next day and you get right back to it but I love I love playing in Chicago um I love Billy Donovan I love our front office I love our team um we had great guys you know it was a year of a lot of adversity for our team you know we we went through a we were the first team to get really like wiped out by COVID in November um then we had you know we lost Pat Williams, second or third year player, was like the number five pick, who was going to be our starting power forward. Lost him like second game of the year. Uh, I had some injuries. Zach was injured. Lonzo was injured. Uh, it was just a rough year, you know, outside of the actual content of basketball. But the the you know the product on the court and the basketball part was was a lot of fun. I can't wait to see what you guys do next year. Zito got all excited about the Bulls being <laughs> back. Zito loves it. Absolutely loves Zito's it. Good guy. Is he? Shout out to Zito. Shout out to Zito. Yeah, 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 one time. Oh, yeah. I had a baby Z. Had a baby Z. If I ever see Grayson Allen, I'm smacking the shit out of him, too. <laughs> right, right, oh, in yeah. right, right in the mouth. Right in the mouth. mouth. Do you and him have quite a battle? Is that why he hurt you? Like, there can only be one uh, white out here at the time? <laughs> He's a punk. No, you know, it's, it's, I have an inside joke with my friends. It's like, you know, the white guys got to stick together in the league because there's only, like, eight of us or ten of us. <laughs> no, it was, just, it was just a bad play. And the worst part about it was, like, he... He reached out to apologize, but it was just like a little late in the season. So I was like, all right, don't worry about it. Like, I'll just talk to him after, after the season. And then we played him in the playoffs. I'm like, all right, this is perfect. Like, into the into the series, like, I'll just talk to him. Like, hey, bro, no ill will. Like, uh, I'm not going to, you know, forgive you for it. But, like, I don't have any, like, I don't wish bad upon the man. Like, I, I don't like I, 
I don't like. Yeah, I know you do, Zito, but I don't. I don't wish. Like I hate seeing guys get injured. You yes. know, like I want guys to be able to be healthy, play basketball, earn their money, you know, do whatever they got to do. Um, but yeah, so then I had the concussion game five, and we lost game five, and I couldn't say anything to him. So I guess I need to, I need to reach back out. And, hey, Grayson, and there's no beef, even though a lot of people say you're just a fucking asshole. Mm -hmm. not, there you go. Not, not him. He's the only one more, not saying. Yeah. It. <laughs> more or less words. More or less. Go ahead, Ty. <laughs> Alex, how long does it take when you get from like the G League into the actual league? Like, how long does it take to acclimate to the speed and the skill of the game, and then from going from that point to like actually making an impact in the games? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, it's night and day, right? Like, I think G League's probably somewhere between high level college and the NBA. Um, you know, it's, it's probably it's probably close to a couple of the overseas leagues that are really elite, that are really good as far as talent wise. Um, but yeah, man, I mean, that whole first year I spent in the G League was me just learning how to play professional basketball. What's you know? different? Well, in college, I'm coming up, I'm playing point guard, and I'm looking over the sideline, like, hey, coach, what play are we running? And then I'm walking the ball up, you got 35, 30 seconds, and I'm like, hey, four down, and then getting everybody in order and going. It's like the NBA, if you got an advantage, you just take it and go. You know, like, you, you, don't, you don't wait for permission to do something in most cases. There are some coaches that are, like, super old school that, Want you to run a bunch of plays every time, but for the most part, it's like quick. Are those coaches action. still around? Are they able to be in the league anymore? Yeah, I mean they're they're far and few in between, but but yeah, there's still some. Like I think Rick Carlisle's a big play caller. Um, I think Thibodeau's like that. Uh, you know, I think I think I think there's only a few though. You know, the leagues the league shift into to younger coaches that you know I think are more yeah. you know player. <laughs> Player, player relationships and like understand the change of the game like we just yeah. talked about like the game's different than what it was 10 15 years ago it looks like jim carrey though so that's cool yeah it's yeah, good it's, it's funny good. probably yeah. Yeah, yeah he won the pass though and he's yeah. here in indy why don't you come hey we'll get we'll get you out of that yeah. that dump of chicago yeah. <laughs> come Whoa. on down to indianapolis yeah. indiana okay. Okay. well easy there easy yeah 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 <laughs> chicago great city um how many headbands do you go through during the season i've seen you become a big time headband guy is that because your big bald dome glistens off of people's faces and eyes or why is that it it, it was before the full shave, but it was a. Uh, we'll give a quick shout out to JaVale McGee. He was the one who who originally told me I was like, "Dude, you should rock the headband." I was like, "All right, I'll try it out." And then I played good, and then he started doing the little, you know, celebration thing, and it just kind of stuck. So we went through it. We also, I got to give a shout out to our equipment guy, Steve. He was with you in Indianapolis. Steve, shout out Steve, good dude. And I talked to him yesterday on Facetime. I Facetime because I need him to send me some shoes from from the gym. And he told me to, to tell you hello. So I've got to make Steve's sure I Steve's a good that. dude. Steve is a good dude for the us. Best. I assume the same for you guys. Yeah. Yeah, the best. The best. Okay, awesome. Uh, but yeah, the, the, the headband just kind of stuck. I say, I usually, well, I don't say I usually, I go through two a game, right? Because I'm just, I'm a heavy sweater, right? So some people change jerseys at halftime. I switch, I got to switch headbands because that thing is, it's gross. You know, by the time we get to the locker room, I've played. 15 minutes already so I'm, I'm full sweat and there's nothing right there's nothing to catch it so it's just it's going straight onto the headband so two a game or 82 games maybe some playoffs so maybe 200 headbands <laughs> yeah. you should do something with those obviously yeah. but and wash them first yeah. Ahead, AJ. yeah definitely wash them hey, are you watching uh, the finals right now and what do you think uh, is going to happen in this one? I know we have a Boston guy, Connor, over there believes oh, yeah. the Celtics going to run away with it. But you think the uh, the Warriors still have some fight left? No, definitely. I've definitely been watching. You know, it's part of the. There, it's like a fine line between like me being eager and me also just being super jealous. You know, the competitiveness in me. Like I'm just pissed that I'm not there. And these. Do you guys care who like, wins? No, I don't. I don't care. I, I as soon as I lose, my care for the NBA season goes out the window. <laughs> Like, I'm just over it, you know. It's one of those things where it's like, so after I've lifted the trophy and I've drinking the beer and the champagne and had the goggles on, like, oh. the only thing I want to do is do that again. And so every year I don't get to do it. It's just, it's a little part of me that just is, like, being tweaked and, and, and being pulled inside. But, no, finals, finals have been good so far. I just don't know. Um, I don't know who's going to win, to be honest. You know, I feel, like, I feel like Boston plays at a really high level and they do really good, but then they turn the ball over for a couple of minutes, and then all of a sudden it's a game. Um, I also don't think Draymond and Clay are going to play as bad as they have the first couple of games. You know, uh, I don't think they're going to run away with it. If Boston wins Game Four, it's going to be it's going to be tough for for Golden State. But 
you know, if any team can come back from 3-1 in the finals, it's probably going to be the guys that, you know, won three in four years. Yeah, I mean, except for the hypocrite that's Clay Thompson who made fun of LeBron for saying something similar to what he said about Boston just a few years ago. Yeah. I've turned on the Golden State team after what happened last night in Boston. <laughs> mm -hmm. I'm big fan. This is not Alex Caruso's <laughs> words. These are my words. That was... Some of the most bitch-made stuff I've ever seen in my entire life, especially if it wasn't Boston, if it wasn't like the most expected thing of all time in yeah. all sports since the beginning of time, I think I wouldn't have been there. Like, I wouldn't have had that big of a deal, but I love Steph. You used to love Clay. Yeah. You used to love Draymond. Mm -hmm. Pool's cool. Pool seems cool. He well, what's the, uh, Jack what's that ball the, from uh, Hank Lord. That? There's that Dark Knight quote. What is it? It's like you uh, live long you enough live to long. become. Yeah. 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 That's that's kind of what it's becoming, isn't it? What is it? You die a hero, or live long enough to see yourself become the villain. Become yep. the villain. Yeah. Shot to you. Hey, Friday <laughs> though. Friday in Boston is gonna be. Yeah. Oh, it's gonna be rowdy. It, 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 they are gonna mm -hmm. put on a show, and it it's because be there's just. I don't know how many, 15,000 of these. Connor, your question for Alex Caruso? Closer to 20,000, but yeah, it's going to be very rowdy on Friday because <laughs> no one's going to have to you know, wake up in the morning and go to work. A lot of Dunkin' Donuts. Alex, one of the big storylines of the finals is the fact that the Warriors come out in the third quarter and you know just dominate. I think under Steve Kerr, they're like plus 2,500 in the playoffs or something mm -hmm. ridiculous like that. What the hell happens at halftime? Do they switch jerseys like you said and it's like a shooter jersey uh -huh. and all of a sudden they just hit everything? What are the halftime adjustments? Adjustments like people have been trying to figure that out for 10 years man well, tell I, me that I, 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 if I if I knew the answer I probably would have beat him a couple more times uh, <laughs> I, I don't there's just man there's something there's something about the competitive you know competitiveness of champions like Draymond Clay uh, they got Iggy uh, Steph obviously like they, there's just something about it to where you know if you're that elite of a player, you can just flip it on and off. And sometimes, you know, you go into halftime and you're like, all right, I was kind of bullshit. And like, let me, let me lock in. And like I saw it, I've seen it with, with LeBron, AD, you know, like there, there's an elite crew where you can just kind of like, you just, they're like, all right, I'm going to start trying. And so it's, it's like that meme where the guy's sitting back in his chair and then he like leans yeah. forward and puts his like elbows on his knees and he's trying like that's sometimes that's just what it is. How many threes will you make right now? You go shoot fifty of them on normal practice day. Whenever you go to that middle school gym right there, just catch and shoot. Where are we shooting from? Like ten from five spots. Uh, yeah. Ten from five spots. I'd probably expect to make it somewhere between forty and forty-five. <laughs> Hell yeah! <laughs> That's so much fun. I bet. How much fun is that? That's a great time. You have a blast. Yeah. Well, when you get when you get hot, I mean, you know, as a shooter, you know, when you, you get hot. Time. It's just like you, you. I start talking shit out loud, just like to nobody, just to the air. I'm just like, I'm like asking the workout guys. It's like, hey, they got another net in the back. Like, we're gonna need. To <laughs> Are you like that with your That's golf the, game? Your golf game like that as well? No, no, no. Uh, I do, I do, I do get, I do get a little hot. Like yesterday when I, I said I shot 81, I shot 38 on the back nine in the last Jeez. like eight holes. I was one under. Like I haven't had a stretch like that in probably like. Like, no, that's not normal. See, that's that's. Yeah, but that's, that's exactly like, what you do when yeah. you're shooting. That's I, a good I, stretch. I, I just said, like, do you do that? You're like, no, it never happens or whatever. That's a fucking great eight holes there, pal. Yeah, but the basketball thing, I could do that seven days of the week. The, the golf thing, that's like once out of every month. Well, we'll see you next month in Tallhead. A ton digs your question for Alex Caruso. Alex, speaking of getting hot, you've mentioned, like, Steph and Dame a few times. Ah, too many Italians. Sorry about it. No, I'm joking. He didn't deserve that. Neither did you. Go ahead, Tom. Sorry, Sorry about that, Chris. Um, and getting hot, like, and you obviously have to cover those guys. Is there a guy? Is it is it them? Like, who if they get hot, you're just like, yeah. What am I gonna fucking do? Yeah, I mean, there's, I mean, there's probably 50 guys in the league that can do that. But there's a couple that like it doesn't matter what you do to start. Like, there's a, there's probably a handful of guys where it's like, all right, if you you follow the game plan. And, and you keep them off of their strong hand or dominant hand, like which way they like to go, keep them off their, like, their go-to moves. You, you know, you can do a good job of them. There's certain guys in the league that, like, you have to show up, play hard as hell, follow the scouting report, and then hope that they don't have just, like, a good night. <laughs> you know, like, like some nights I can go out there and play the best defense, follow the scouting report. Coverage-wise, the bigs are up. They're doing everything they're supposed to do, and they're just going to make tough shots. You know, like some guys are just going to do that and then they'll get their average. But if you show up and you kind of bullshit, then they're going to get 40. 
that's kind of that's kind of where it lies. It's like if you show up and do your job, like they're gonna get their average, like the, the best twenty players in the league. You're not gonna stop them from getting their twenty five, their twenty, whatever it is. Like that's just gonna happen For, with the free throws transition. They're gonna score enough points, but if you don't show up to play, they're gonna get forty to fifty. Do you talk shit? Any shit talking? Who's the best at it? No, not really, dude. After I, I did a lot in high school. A lot in high school. I was I was a little shit in high school. I was talking shit to everybody. Yeah. College, college, it kind of it kind of waned out a little bit. But then there was you know you got into some conference games on the road at Arkansas, Alabama, Auburn's worst. Uh, there's there's just you know some frat boys in the crowd talking shit. You gotta you gotta let them know hey you're you're here to watch me. Uh, but then once I got to the league, I was like I, right, I'm not gonna make this any harder on myself than I have to. You know, because there's some guys that they t- you talk shit to them and they like wake up, yeah, and they're like, "Oh, you want you want me to try?" And then they like <laughs> score ten points in the rest of, like the last five minutes of the quarter. So, no, I got away from that. Early. <laughs> <laughs> I got away from that early in my professional career because I was like, "All right, if my main thing is going to be defense to start, like I don't need to make this any harder on myself to make it in the league than I than it already is." Why do you think casual fans try to claim that NBA players uh, don't play defense? I know I've only been to a few games and been down close, and, and all I ever thought the whole time was it would be absolutely impossible to score one bucket yeah. against you guys. Like how hard you play, how long everybody is, and the shots you guys hit are like the shots that we take on our driveway messing around Horse. That, are, that are impossible, and they're your, yeah. like your guys' just normal, average, everyday shot. Yeah, I mean, well, people don't realize, like, they watch the game on TV, and it moves really slow on TV, right? You get courtside, and you see how strong everybody is, how big everybody is, how fast they move. Like, these are some of the best athletes in the world. Like, we, we kind of forget about that when you see it on TV. You know, you, you, you almost uh, cartoonize it a little bit to where it's like, all right, this isn't real life. Dude, these dudes are killers. Like, they're here for a reason. They pay them $30 million a year for a reason they're not just out here just because and that's that's part of it too is like you can practice offense as much as you want in the off season right like i can go shoot ten thousand shots in in two days or do whatever i got to do i can only do so much to work on defense right like i can't i'm not gonna like call steph and dame like hey dude let me guard you for a couple <laughs> days this week so i can get better it's effort they're right gonna be like they're not well, first of all they're not gonna answer second of all they're gonna be like get out of my like get out of my phone it's just it's just one of those things man where offense is always going to rule the world you know that's part of the reason why you know they change the foul rules every year they try to make it more entertaining for fans like people want to see offense people don't want to see 2000s pistons versus spurs where it's 75 to 80 love. Yeah. Or, those games blow. personally i i think there's an there's a there's an art to that and i love watching it but oh yeah no, no. fans don't love that no. uh are you staying out of the paint if john morant has a you know, full run up and lead there because he said, and I quote, "I'm not scared to go up on anybody." Mm-hmm. He, he just goes up. He feel it feels like he's a different player than anybody else, and he's kind of coming into his own. Why do you think that is? And is he a type of player that is like impossible to guard? You think? Yeah, I mean, there, there are certain aspects of his game that it's just like, all right, once he gets to a certain like, it's like Zion. They're two different bodies, but it's the same thing. It's like once they get to their launch pad, it's kind of over. You know, like once they get to their spot and they're like either side by side or next to you, like they're a better athlete than everybody else that they're guarding. <laughs> they're just going to hang in the air, adjust, and then lay the ball in. And so that's one of the things where it's like, uh, well, first of all, to answer your question, no, I'm not going to jump with them. <laughs> Two, I'm probably going to be guarding them. So like if he gets by me, my teammate's going to be the one that's <laughs> got to make the business decision if they're going to get So... So they just need to do some film and realize that's a bad idea. But no, nah, dude, there's certain yeah, there's certain guys in the league. This is my rule on trying to block shots or take a charge. I have to be there first. If I'm not there first, I'm not making a play. Because if you're not there first, if you're if you're late to contest a shot and you're not a seven footer that's like bouncy or Jared Allen or like JaVale McGee or Rudy Gobert, like I'm, you're gonna lose that. You're gonna lose that that altercation and, and it's probably gonna end up on sports center bleacher report house of highlights like, oh omar's gonna get you uh-huh. he gonna get you. Yeah. omar's <laughs> gonna get you i mean that is 100 real last question here and we can't thank you enough for joining us unless zito's got one for him 
Is I it? got my moment in. Yeah, Zito. Fuck Grayson Allen. Yeah, fuck. Hey, all right. And there's Zito. Thanks for your loyalty. <laughs> hey, do, do your coaches want you to contest every dunk? Yeah, well, I mean, of course they do. But what do you I mean? Sometimes, sometimes it's better to just give them the two points than the and one, and let's just take the ball out of the net and go down and, and get it back the next time. And guess what? They're going to score again, too, bro. Yeah. There's a chance they're going to score again. <laughs> yeah. points. You know, you give up 25 points a quarter, that's a good quarter. That's amazing, isn't it? That's what you're going back to with everybody loves offense. Speaking of offense, a man who's just a triple-double machine if he was ever to play, and you mentioned his name there. Zion Williamson is the guy, right? You you agree with that, mm -hmm. obviously, is what it sounds mm -hmm. like. Let's get him on the court. Yeah, that'd be saying, nice. And what are they talking about with this ramp-up phase? What is this thing? Have you heard about this before? You guys have to go one-on-zero, one-on-one, then two-on-one, then two-on-two, then three-on-two, then three-on-three. Well, not, not as many numbers, but, yeah, it's wow. essentially that. You know, it's like one-on-one -on -one workouts to one-on-one, -on -one, and you might play, like, some half-court two-on-two, half-court three-on-three, and then eventually you get into five-on-five full court. But I mean, honestly, it's 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 case by case, you know. Like he's a big dude; he puts a lot of weight on that foot, a lot of force when he jumps. You saw the clip of him bending the the court and whatever gym they were in when he when he took off the dunk. Like he's just he's a freak, you know, in the best way possible. He's like Giannis, where they're just physically gifted. And when you're the number, well, he was number one pick, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah, so when you're the number one pick and you're coming off of an injury like that and you're supposed to be the franchise player for the next decade, they're going to do everything they can to make sure you're 100% before they put you back out on the court. Oh. Because if you get hurt again, now all of a sudden that year they just wasted their number one pick and they're just you know back into it. That Pelicans team, though, if they got Zion back, they're going to be they're going to be a problem. You know, CJ McCollum's a killer. Bi's a killer. Great on TV, CJ. They got great. They got great young young wings in in Herbert Jones and uh in the uh, Murphy kid. I I like I like the the setup of that team a lot. You know, from a third party perspective. Last question for me, and I don't know if AJ has one or not. Uh, did you play hoops when you were in jail? <laughs> No, no, I didn't. Nah, did you go out to the yard? <laughs> no. I, didn't, I, didn't I, didn't, I didn't. I didn't make it to the changing room or the, or the cell. I just went straight to uh, to booking and then got out of there. Well, congrats. Me too. I, I mean, I had to sit in a cell there for about a couple hours, but what a moment for you there. It, yeah. That's nightmare going through airport, forgetting to check a pocket. I'm never never going back through through College Station Airport again. They, my own people let me down. <laughs> <laughs> it, it be your own people, man. Uh, the enemy's always within your own camp. We're happy that you joined our camp here today. You're the best, dude. Uh, hopefully you'll come back sometime soon. Enjoy the off season. Hopefully you get on Spanish Oaks too. Hopefully they say your money's good here. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. If you need to make a call, I'll, I'll give you the number. I'm not fucking the golf people hate me. Enforcer. <laughs> You're the enforcer. That's what you do. Well, you got the bat. You got the. <laughs> Listen, if you see me with this in Tahoe, just know the fucking hammer time's coming. You hit the ball a long way, what, I assume, huh? What, what's your. Yeah, I mean, when you go straight, yeah. You shot 81, you're one under through eight holes. Shut the fuck up. You're a good golfer. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're a good golfer. I don't need uh, to hear it. You're a good golfer. That's what it sounds like. I can be. On some good days, I can I can play golf. Like Tahoe, you think you'll play well? AJ's a veteran at this thing. He thinks he's going to win it every single year. He hasn't yet. Well, I know I'm not going to win it. Maybe. you got to put three good days together, you yeah. can. There's there's dudes that are scratch golfers out there that are going to shoot like three under, four under. Fucking Marty Fish. Like hidden... I'm not worried about winning the thing. I just want to go positive. I want to have positive points. Me too. Yeah, me too. Drink a good some goal. beer, have a good time. Oh, Positive you gonna, points. You'll be boozing a little bit out there? What? Hey, it's the off season, right? I, I can't do it during the year, so. I'll be boozing a little bit, too. What? Why? I think we'll be College Station airporting, too, maybe. <laughs> no, not you, obviously. Not you. No, no. <laughs> no, 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 no. Maybe no. me, though. Maybe me. Well, if yeah, we, got, we have no strikes left. Hey, we, <laughs> we appreciate you so much, man. Enjoy the off season. Enjoy the shoot around this afternoon. I appreciate it, guys. I'll talk to you all soon. Ladies and gentlemen, Alex Cruz. Yeah! Very good at basketball. Yeah. Think, Th think about how much fun that has to be to walk in any pickup game. All right, I'm going to fucking probably score all 11 points in this game here if I wanted mm -hmm. to on anybody in here. It's like what J.J. Reddick said when that one, when he was just shooting around by yeah. himself and that one guy was talking shit to him. Yeah, one okay. and his friends, right? Yeah. It was him and friends. Yeah. I beat every motherfucker 11 zip in that gym and then walked out of there. It's awesome. Also, just assuming, like, from watching games, a guy is probably 6'2". He's 6'5". You know, yeah. he walks around to the 6'. Probably 6'6 six, six with shoes on. Huge. Like, 
monster. Yeah. That is so tall. 6'5 is so tall. All really basketball players, like you think, you see him on TV, oh, I'll get a 6'1, and he's 6'7. Like stuff like that happened. And also, like a lot of basketball players, their waist is like 22 inches around. And then there's giant shoulders, big arms. Tatum. It's, yeah, they're all in geez. great shape usually. Too. Tatum has become, and Steph as well. Steph has become an absolute stallion. They, they talked about his conditioning, his cardio. But Tatum is a, he's an hourglass. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And like when you watch highlights from his first or second year, like compared to what he is now, he is fucking yoked. LeBron now. has transformed his body too completely. Oh, yeah. Twice. Okay, excited to see what Zion does. Mm -hmm. yeah. He's going to have to, I think. Yeah. And I don't want to be the one to say it because we're big Zion guys, yeah. but I think he's going to have to <laughs> yeah. do that. Yeah. His rookie year, though, even when they showed like, you know, from like photo day or whatever, he was fucking shredded up too. He was, well, LeBron was also. Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yoked, but he, he slimmed yeah, down. Yeah, he needs to stay shredded and slimmed yeah. down. That's a long season, dude. Well, Miami's, like, real strict on I, I think when, in Miami, with Spolstra and Pat Rowe, they, like, test their body fat daily, like, hydration. Like, they're they're dead serious on all that stuff. That's a, the discipline mm -hmm. that it takes to play 82 games at a high cardio. I mean, that is I, – I don't think I could do it for well, – So much running. So much running. Like,